today we have an amazing program that I'd like to talk to you about. We're going to talk about ancient animals and fossils. But first, I would like to start off with a story. And this is something that happened to me not too long ago, actually, over at Ledges State Park. Many of you might know Ledges. You might have hiked Ledges. Your legs maybe got tired at Ledges because of all the stairs. But it is a gorgeous park to go hiking. Anyway, I was there hiking one day, and as I was walking up one of those hills, I started to hear something off in the distance that sounded like Now, I looked up, there was not a cloud in the sky, so it wasn't thunder, so what was going on? So I kept hiking, and I kept listening, and the sound got louder, and it was definitely getting closer. So as I heard it getting closer and closer, I jumped behind a tree and I, because I didn't want to be found out by whatever was making this loud noise. So I was behind the tree when all of a sudden from the top of the hill came running down a woolly mammoth and it ran by me. It was like the size of an elephant and it had the longest fur and the tusks were twice as tall, twice as long as I am tall. And it smelled so bad, I can still, it singed my nose hairs. I can still remember that smell. So I was sitting there and it ran by and it went down the hill and then it took off. And it was amazing. I had never seen one of those before. Now I see by the look of your faces, there's some skepticism out there that maybe you don't think my story is true. It could be true. 15,000 years ago, it could have been true because we did have mammoths in Iowa. Now, how do we know that? How do scientists know that we had mammoths in Iowa? One word, fossils. Many fossils have been found. Fossils are evidence of the past, and we will go into that a little bit later in the program and talk about how they are made and why, why they are here. So fossils, there has been a lot of fossil evidence in Iowa of woolly mammoths being here. Now, I wanna follow up that not so true story with a true story. Now this is a story that happened not so long ago in 2008 and it happened not so far from Story County over in Oskaloosa. There was a farmer who was, he had a lot of property and he was out walking the property with his two sons. They were looking for blackberries. They were out picking blackberries. When walking by a stream, one of the sons noticed something sticking out of the water and it looked like a ball. So he went over there. And of course, what do you think you're gonna do if you see a ball in the water? You're gonna try to kick it. So it didn't move. So it took them a while before they dug it up. And when they finally got the whole thing dug up, they discovered it was a bone that was extremely long. So when they turned to the experts who knew more about these things than them, it was discovered that what they had found in that creek was a mammoth femur. So one of the longest, the largest bones in the body. So they had discovered a femur. And through subsequent digs and whatnot, they found many mammoths at this spot. Now those bones weren't the actual bones. Those bones were the fossils of the mammoth. So what makes a fossil a fossil? So I wanna go over a few of the different ways. We're only gonna talk about four ways that fossils are made, although there are many other ways than what we will be discussing. Maybe something for you to do a little bit more research on. So one of the ways that fossils are made is from remain, something that an animal has left behind, something like maybe its footprints get left behind, like these footprints from mammoths that walked across these plains up in Canada. So that footprint, an animal made those footprints, and here's an example of the size of a mammoth footprint, much, much larger than my hand. So the way those fossils were made is that a mammoth walked across that area when it was wet. So maybe it was muddy or sandy, and then that all dried up, 
So it's footprints. I'm sure you've seen footprints dried in the mud before, whether they were yours, your animals, or maybe you were next to a creek or a river and saw those dried up. Well, what happened next was very important. So flooding must have happened. So water came in, covered these footprints, and deposited a layer of sediment on top. So sediment is just a type of dirt, whether it's more sandy or clay content or has more silt in it. So it's a kind of dirt that settled on top of these footprints. And then more dirt settled and more dirt settled, protecting those footprints until eventually one day, all of that sediment on top was eroded away. So washed away or blown away by the wind and these footprints were revealed. So that is a trace fossil. That is one way that, that fossils are made. Another way fossils are made is through a fun word called permineralization. So super long, but super fun to learn and throw around at home, um, around your grown-ups. Hey, I learned about permineralization today. Do you know what permineralization is? They might not. You could educate them. So what happens during permineralization is an animal or plant part, maybe it's a bone, maybe it's a piece of wood, like in this tree, falls to the ground. And once it falls to the ground, there are lots of holes in trees and bones, lots of pores, lots of openings. So once it is on the ground, normally this would happen in water, maybe a stream or a lake or a shallow ocean. Layers and layers of, of sediment come on top of it and wash through it. Now as that water is passing through all of those pores, that water deposits lots of minerals. Now, something else we know that is made of minerals are rocks. So essentially, it is taking away all of the bone material, replacing it with that rock material. So at some point, all of that bone material, or maybe if it's tree, that wood material disappears and goes away, like dissolves or breaks down. And what is left behind is almost a perfect replica of the original item. So this is fossilized wood, or petrified wood is what we call it, and it is rock-like. So that's not what wood sounds like when you knock on it and it hurts my knuckles. So it is definitely made out of minerals. So petrified wood, petrified bones, are also what is found as the fossils a lot of times that we find from ancient animals, animals that are from the past. So we've got trace fossils, so we've got the footprints left behind. We have permineralization. So the next type of fossil, this is called a mold fossil. So the way this one is formed is an animal part, like maybe a shell, falls to the bottom of shallow water or deep water whatever works. At the bottom, layers again of sediment come on top of it. Now as those layers build up, it creates pressure and pushes and pushes and pushes on that. Eventually, just like with the bone and the tree, the, the organic material, the shell part or the animal part, all the gooey parts, they go away. And what you have left behind is a cast or a mold, I'm sorry, a mold of the animal that was there. Now this doesn't end here. We're going to move on to our last type of fossil. So we've got our mold. So what happens next? We've got our mold. Layers of sediment are not done coming down in the water. So again, those layers of sediment fall on top of that layer after layer and it forms pressure and it pushes on that sediment and pushes it into that mold. And then what you get is a cast of that fossil. So you end up twice removed from the original animal, but a really good outline of what that animal looked like. So many ways that fossils are formed. Well, now that we know how they are formed, what can they tell us? they can tell us a lot of different things. So that farmer in Oskaloosa, they found a lot of teeth. So these are mammoth teeth. 
So if you look at this tooth, first it's going to tell you this animal wasn't small. If it had to fit these things in its mouth, it's probably a fairly good sized animal, which we know from the size of that giant femur bone that they found. This tooth, however, is telling us what the animal is eating. So it's got a flat top. So if you feel around in your mouth with your tongue, which teeth have flat tops? Hopefully, they're going to point to the ones in the back of your mouth, your molars. They're a lot flatter than if they are teeth up front that are meant for tearing and ripping. So that flat top is excellent for crushing vegetation and chewing vegetation, and not hard vegetation. It's got to be stuff like grasses and, and forbs, flowers. So we know that that's what this animal was eating. Well, if they were eating that, then obviously it was in their habitat. So Iowa at one time had lots of grasses, lots of things for mammoths to eat. Now, another thing that this tells us about their surroundings, so they were giant, but they were also covered in fur. Now, the way that we know that mammoths were covered in fur is that many of them have been found frozen, perfectly preserved with their furry coat on them. So they had long guard hairs, and then they had two layers of wool underneath, which you're not going to live that way in a current Iowa summer. It's going to have to be cold. So we know that this animal was around during the Ice Age. We know what it ate. We know how it kept warm. So fossils tell us many, many things. We also had mastodons around during the Ice Age here. Now here is a look at a mastodon tooth. If we compare this with the mammoth tooth, you can see it's still a pretty flat top. So mastodons were also herbivores or vegetarians like the mammoths, but they were able to chew on things like branches. So a little rougher plants than what the mammoth could do. But again, it was big sized, had a furry coat. So again, it tells us what the surroundings were like at that time. Now, you probably have noticed a few patterns here. So the fossils we talked about, most of them were formed in water because that's where you get the layers of sediment. Most of them are also discovered in water because water erodes things, so it washes things away. And that allows those, those buried fossils to start showing up for people to be able to discover. Now another pattern that we have among ancient animals or Ice Age animals is their size. So if you think about the mammoth, the mastodon, these animals were nine to ten foot tall at a human or at their shoulder. So I am five foot six. So a mammoth would be another five foot, be two of me on top of each other. So they were very large. Other animals that have been discovered in Iowa, things like the giant beaver. We have giant ground sloths that have been discovered in Iowa. We have uh, the giant short-faced bear that has been discovered in Iowa. Stag moose have been discovered in Iowa. So many of these creatures have been discovered and they are giant. If you look at one finger of a giant ground sloth, just one finger, that'll give you an indication of how giant these creatures were. So, why? Why were they so big? Well, there's a few different reasons for that, a few different inferences that we can make from their size. So first of all, Larger animals lose less body heat, which we know is important during an ice age. We also know that because they're bigger, they're going to have thicker skin, which also helps to insulate them. Another reason for being so large that helps them is they have a lower heart rate. We know that larger mammals, their heart rate is really low. So that means that all of their bodily functions, their digestive rate, their metabolic rate, the amount of energy that they use, it's going to be lower. That means less time spent hunting for food or trying to find food to eat. 
larger mammals live longer. Okay, that's something we can discover from animals today. And if you're a larger animal, you're gonna be a lot safer from the predators that are out there than you would be if you were a smaller mammal. So lots of reasons to have that large size. Now I have mentioned quite a few animals that have been discovered here in Iowa. A lot of them are recent discoveries. So there are still so many things out there to discover. So get outside, go find a creek and do some creek walking. Maybe go hunt for fossils on a sandbar and, and see what you can discover because you might be just like these children and discover something new in your area. They discovered a mastodon tooth when they were playing in their local creek. So get outside, go discover, and happy adventuring.